Alright. Okay, this is a short video about introduction about differentiation because a lot of students think that this is one of the most difficult chapters in their form for MX, I mean for SPM. So over here I'm going to like do an introduction about differentiation. Uh, I hope in this video at least we can give you some idea about what is differentiation, especially in paper two, because a lot of people keep on like so struggle about the differentiation. So I make a short video about yeah to discuss about differentiation. Alright, so in this chapter actually yeah you will always see something like dy dx. Alright, you see something like dy dx. So for me if I, if if you want me to explain about dy dx, I would say in your chapters dy dx actually means gradient function. Gradient function. And a lot of students actually ask me what is the difference between gradient and gradient function? Okay, let's say we got gradient like y equals to 2x plus 7. y equals to mx plus 0. Hey, you know 2 actually is your gradient. Okay, but 2 over here is the constant value, so we call it gradient. When we call it gradient function, mean it is not a constant value. Alright, maybe constant is just something like so hard for you to understand. Constant, okay, for this case, the gradient is 2. But for the gradient function, you might got something like this one 2x. Yeah. Okay, you might get 2x. So 2x and 2, what is the difference between them? 2 is the constant. Constant means the value will not change. So I definitely know this one is a straight line. Because the gradient will remain 2 no matter in what point. So let's say I got so many points over here. At this point, gradient equals to 2. At this point, gradient equals to 2. And at this point, gradient is equals to 2. So that's why I say constant means on the straight line, all the points will have the same gradient, which is 2. But gradient function is different. So if gradient function is 2x, so means what? This one is not possible, it's a curve. Because what? The gradient will keep on changing based on your, co uh, your different coordinate. So let's say, maybe this one, when x equals to 1. So I know gradient equals to 2, because 2 multiple 1. Here, maybe the x equals to 2, so the gradient will be 4. This one, maybe the gradient x equals to 3, so the gradient will equal to 6. For this point, maybe x equals to 4, the gradient will equal to 8. And then for this point, yeah, maybe x equals to 5, and then the gradient equals to 10. So, from the example over here, you can find actually in the curve, the gradient is keep on changing. So we call it gradient function. Okay, function, if you learn about function, you know function related something to x, or x squared, or 2 power of x, or some, something like this. So the one we call function. So when you say gradient function, means, means it's, it's the gradient for the curve. No matter what is the pattern of a curve, this is a quadratic curve, it can be cubic curve. So for a curve, if you want to find the gradient, we have to do differentiation. For the straight line, if we want to find a gradient, we just use the gradient formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, so this is a different. If this one is a straight line, we want to find gradient, we, do, we use the formula. But in a curve, if you want to find a gradient, you have to differentiate it. So therefore, this is the reason why the differentiation come in. Right, so and then the dy dx is based on what is your equation for this one. When differentiate is very different. Okay, that okay, that one maybe I explain it in another video because sometimes you will see dA dt or d or ds dt, something like that. So differentiate not necessary dy dx. Dy dx is ba is based on what is the variable. Because most of the equation for the for the curve is something like y and x, right? When you re related y and x is just dy dx. Alright, because mean we differentiate y to an x. So for example, 
I, I give something like the area of the circle, maybe A equals to pi r squared. So if I differentiate A, what I will get, I will actually get dA, uh, differentiate A toward the r here, so called dA dr. So it's just 2 pi r. Alright, so dy dx means I differentiate y to an x. Alright, because in the because in the equation you only have y and x, but sometimes in the equation you have fx. Also, maybe equals to two x squared plus seven x. All right, a lot of students might struggle if I got the equation like this. I differentiate. How am I going to write? Because you can't like dfx over dx, right? So, if you write, if the question write in the function form, so what? If you differentiate this one, one time you just dot it one. This one means differentiate one time. You got four x plus seven. Okay, if I got two dot over here, mean I differentiate second time. This is four. All right, a lot of students might think that differentiate f x is same with inverse of f x. This is power of negative one. They are totally different. This one we call inverse function. This one we call inverse. This one is differentiate. Is differentiate f x. This one is inverse of fx. So these two is a dif different meaning. All right, just give you some idea why the meaning. Because a lot of time when students see dot here, okay, the student couldn't understand about that. All right, I'm going to end the video soon. Just give you a more brief idea about differentiation. Okay, let's say I have a curve like this. Okay, this is what happened for the dy dx. Okay, when I differentiate the curve like this, you will find out that actually over here the gradient is increasing. The gradient value is keep on increasing. This is positive, huh? This is short form for positive. The gradient function will get positive, positive, positive until the turning point. This one over here I call it turning point. The gradient will suddenly become zero. Because on the turning point, sometimes they call maximum point or minimum point or turning point. The dy dx will equal to zero. This is the reason why. Because the gradient will keep on increasing until certain point, the gradient becomes zero. Then the gradient will keep on decreasing. So you've got the negative gradient, negative gradient, negative gradient. Until certain point, maybe here I make a U-turn. This is called turning point, right? So over here the gradient will go into zero again. So this is the reason why when you solve the question, you always will do something like dy dx equals to zero at turning point. So this is the re reason why the at the turning point dy dx equals to zero. So for example, when we solve the question, we might have more than one turning point. This one is very depend on the pattern of the graph. Let's say I got a pattern of the graph like look like this. You see how many turning points I have? I have one, two, three. So at all the turning point, what we know is dy dx equals to zero. This one is fixed already because we know at the turning point gradient will equal to zero. So when you solve the question, you do dy dx equals to zero to okay to solve it. Yes, it's correct. But then dy dx equals to zero. When you solve it, you can find it's either minimum point or maximum point. You can't determine which one is minimum and which one is maximum because dy dx equals zero only tell us that it is either mini maximum or minimum. So if you want to know whether this one is minimum or maximum, what you need to do next is you have to differentiate second time. If you differentiate second time, I call d2y dx squared, you got the value is positive. If positive means you got positive 2, so I call bigger than 0 means it is minimum point. So if you differentiate the second time, you got the value negative, maybe like negative 7, means less than 0, it is maximum point. So because a lot of time your exam question actually will ask you determine the nature of the turning point. Because when we do dy dx equals to zero, we can only find out turning point. 
And turning point, in this example, you know that it can be maximum or it can be minimum. So we do not know whether it is minimum or maximum, but we can use it to solve certain part of the question. Because the question tells you this is the minimum point, find what is the coordinate. So we will do dy dx equal to zero. If the question says this is the minimum point, I will do dy dx equal to zero also. Why? Because I know at minimum, maximum or turning point, dy dx equal to zero. This is correct. You can use this method to find coordinate, yes. You will find the certain coordinate, yes. But then you cannot determine whether the coordinate is maximum or minimum unless the question tell you is it maximum or minimum. So a lot of time in your paper too, the question will ask, determine the nature of the turning point. Meaning, or it asks you the turning point whether it's maximum or minimum, you have to differentiate second time. So you differentiate second time, you have, of course it's the same thing, you have to substitute your x value into here. And then you see whether if you get the negative value, means it is maximum point. If you differentiate second time, you got the positive value, you, it is minimum point. So this is maximum point, right? So when I differentiate second time, I know I definitely will get le value less than zero. Alright, so over here you can find out your dy dx is keep on increasing, increasing, so over here it's increased. So until turning point, the gradient turn to zero and then the gradient will start to decrease. Until the turning point, the gradient is zero, then the, gra the gradient start to increase again. Then until the turning point, the gradient is zero, then the gradient will be decreased again. Okay, this is what happened to the curve. So, okay, so I'm going to show, show you some example here for, uh, before I end my video. Right, so you see an equation over here. Okay, so first, okay, the question might ask you, find the turning point for this one, or find the minimum point or maximum point for this equation. So if I want to find the turning point, it's very simple. I just do the dy dx, which is 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. So I say turning point from, the, from, this, from this graph, we know turning point dy dx will equal to 0. Correct or not? So I just make dy dx equals to 0 for turning point. So my 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 will equal to 0. So therefore, I simplify by divide 3 for everything. Minus 3 equals 0. And then I factorize out. I will get x, x, and 3, 1. This is negative, this is positive. So therefore, I will get x equals to negative 1, or x will equal to 3. So that means for this one, I actually have two turning points. Of course, I can find the y coordinate by substitute uh, negative 1 into this equation. Maybe this one, y, let's see, negative 1. Uh, negative, negative 1, minus 3, minus 4, minus 4 plus 9, uh, minus 4, yeah, it's plus 9, so minus 4 plus 9 is 5, 5 plus 5, y equals to 10, so I got one coordinate called negative 1 and 10, and then same thing, I can substitute the 3 into here, which I will get 27, uh, minus 27, uh, minus 27 plus 5, so basically I will have negative 22, this y equals to negative 22. So, I will have 3, negative 22. Alright, so, until here, that means in this equation, I have two turning points. Which is this one and this one. But then the problem is, I do not know which one is maximum and which one is minimum. I know they are either minimum or maximum, or both also maximum, or both also minimum. I do not know which one is maximum and minimum. So, what I can do next is, I will try to differentiate a second time. So from here, I got my dy dx, right? So I'm going to differentiate a second time. So I differentiate 3x squared, I got 6x minus 6. All right, so I want to know which one is minimum and maximum. So what I will do is I will substitute the x value only. I will substitute the x value into my this one. So when x equals to negative 1, so actually I will got my d2y dx squared or equals to negative 1 multiple 6 is negative 6 minus 6, which is negative 12. Negative 12, is it less than 0? Alright, I say if less than 0 means maximum. So therefore, from here, I can know this is, when I substitute negative 1, I will go less than 0. So I know this one is maximum point. So same thing. I do this one for the second one. 
when x equals to 3 because this coordinate x equals to 3 right when x equals to 3 I substitute into d2y dx square so I will got 6 3 minus 6 which is 18 minus 6 which is 12 it's bigger than 0 right so if bigger than 0 based on this diagram bigger than 0 you will got minimum point so this one is minimum point so this is how we decide which point is maximum and which point is minimum. All right, last but not least before I end my video, normally how I remember this one is also, I use a smiling face one, okay? If a differential second time, I get positive value. You imagine positive energy, you will be very happy, right? So you will smile. So when you smile, you get minimum point. Do you see that? You got minimum. So, if less than zero means negative thing, right? Negative, you will feel very sad. So if you feel very sad, you will got maximum. Do you see that? The curve here, you got maximum. This is how I remember. I know differentiate second time, less than zero or bigger than zero, which one is maximum and which one is minimum. Right, I hope this short video can give you some basic idea about what is differentiation and how it actually works. Right, anyways, thanks for watching.